What's up, buddy? Come here. Oh, boy. You know, I love the winter. Uh, I just love this kind of beauty. I like getting out in it. And uh, one of the things I love to do is go camping, especially. I love winter camping. There's no bears. Uh, there's no bugs. There's no rain. There's no mud. You know, it's got its own silence to it. It's just... Uh, there's beauty I cannot explain to you. And one of the other reasons I like winter is because if you if you desire to, you can bring a polk sled in. A polk sled allows you to take a lot more equipment in, which is a good thing because a lot of times when you're winter camping, you need more equipment, either through clothing or you want to bring in a hot tent like I'm going to do coming up here. I'm about to take my two girls on our annual winter camping trek, and uh, I'm, going to br I'm going to hot tent it with it this time. We're going to really go luxurious and... Uh, bring a teepee in and uh, bring a stove in. So I'm going to use my polk sled on this trip. I've got an older vid up where we just went in very light and did it with a with some sleeping bags and uh, a fire and that was a lot of fun too. This is just a different element to it. This is my own personal polk sled. It's a military surplus fiberglass sled uh, built like a tank but it's probably too big for most people's standards. I like it. It'll never break and once it gets on top of the uh, the snow it, it slides across real easy i don't mind it but for most people it's probably too heavy it's pushing you know 40 some pounds i like it also because it's got the built-in straps and you can put everything underneath the uh you know the canvas but for my kids this year i want them to pull their own polk sled to kind of get used to it so i'm going to make them a really lightweight one and i thought i'd put this on uh, video so I, I could show you how i do it it's a pretty cheap process and uh, adds a di different element to winter camping in general okay this is the uh sled that I got for my uh, kids polk sled project. I got it from Fleet and Farm for, I don't know what it was actually, it was like 12 bucks, maybe 14. It's uh, lightweight but rugged, high density polyethylene and uh, I like how, how deep it is. It's probably six inches on the side here so they can hold their sleeping bags in the tent and it's still, I mean, super light. I mean, I want to say that's, whew, man, it's, I bet you that's less than two pounds. Unbelievable. So, anyway, I got some stuff together. I like to make my uh, polk sled rider poles out of uh, electrical conduit. It holds up better to uh, UV rays. This is the 80 weight. It's not the 40 weight schedule. And uh, it works really good. I like it. And then I, whatever I cut down, I can actually use for ski poles for the kids. Maybe I'll, if I have a chance, I'll show you that too. They work really well for uh, walking sticks. 80 schedule, uh, PVC electrical conduit. And then I got some channeling and uh, what do you call these? You know, these things. What are those called? Tie rod ends. Yeah, I had it for a go-kart uh, project. I actually had these laying around. This is probably the most uh, expensive piece. And on a, a couple odds and ends here, I'm going to use this for backing. And you're going to need an array of tools, too, if you're going to do this. Alright, the first thing I'll do is uh, cut this channeling down. i got to cut the top off here. Okay, we're going to make uh, two pieces out of this part. And before you do anything else, after you cut that channeling off, try to clean it up as much as you can with the grinder. Uh, it's best when you got something to hold on to to get in there. And <clears throat> these pins are going to go in here. So we're going to open that up with the drill before we do anything else as well. Because we've got uh, such a big piece of bar to, to start with. Good. And then do the other side. And then again, clean these up best you can now while you still got something to hold on to. Alright, now I'll cut the pieces off.
Okay, I got my two pieces, and I just decided on the spur of the moment that I'm going to uh, make a, a little triangle design for the hookup and get rid of this extra metal that I feel like is just going to be in the way anyway. Again, I tried to clean it up at least roughly. And that's what I ended up with. A couple brackets. Little finger on the trigger. Oh yeah. Okay, and those will hook up to that sled about like that. Once the brackets are out of the way, we can cut our uh, our leader poles down. And what I like to do usually is cut the leader poles to the length of the sled so they will uh, fit in the sled. Okay, to ready the tie rod ends, just screw it into the tie rod end as far as you can. And then take your nut and just barely put it on there. You can get a propane torch or a heating source and just heat that nut up on the end. It doesn't take long. Once you get it good and hot, take the end of your conduit and begin to melt it in. So you don't want it real, real hot. You may have to uh, to reheat it to get it to keep going in, but you're going to mold that shape into the plastic. So keep reheating until you can get it all the way in. But you don't want it too hot that it starts the conduit on fire. Oh, I love that smell. That's perfect. And then let it cool off as straight as you can. I just put it outside and stuck it in the snow. Keep it as straight as you can and just let it cool off in that position. Because we got to be able to unscrew that and I want to put some epoxy in there to set it. So I got both of these sitting up straight and just cooling off. Give them the time to set. Okay, once these are thoroughly cooled off, bring them back in and set them up with the epoxy. So I got some quick setting epoxy. Got a good amount on there. Equal amounts. Mix that up. Okay, this is pretty straightforward. Take a big gob of it. And this is about the time I always think, geez, I wish I had some paper towels in here. And then uh, screw that in. Okay, once I get it tightened down, I always put a, you know, like wipe a bead around there to seal it up. If I had some paper towels, I would smooth it out, but I don't have any. So, you know, I'm, I don't know, maybe I'll find something. But uh, 
I always like to hang it upside down so all the epoxy goes to the bottom and seals up. Okay, the tie rod ends are setting up. And while that's happening, I'm basically going to do the same thing on the other side with these eye bolts. I'm going to heat that nut up and stick it into uh, the other end so I can hook it up to my belt. This is a little easier to keep centered because uh, you know you can stick the eye bolt in there and it'll kind of keep itself. Okay, same deal. Once this is cooled down, take it out. Mix up your epoxy. And that should fill up nice for the most part. We'll have extra left over to fill in. So what you want to make sure is that you get it the same as your other end or the direction that it's pointing in. So this one is up and down matching this one. So the bit extra that I have, that's probably too much on there, working quickly, I will fill in any of the well that's open with epoxy to seal that up. And then, remembering paper towels this time. I'll just clean it up so it doesn't look like crap. And gravity will do the rest. It'll fill it in nicely. Looks like I got a little air bubble. I do like, even though it says do it yourself, I do like a finished product when I'm done. Okay, the epoxy is set in both ends. Poles are almost done. I'm going to get back to the brackets. While we were working on the poles, I actually threw some black paint on there. This is barely dry. And I'm going to use my unbelievable eyeballing skills to uh, set the brackets up. Remember, we, we made those brackets out of this channeling, and I had to cut the top off of both these. Well, we're going to use this top of this channeling as the backing to put uh, you know more of that stress over the surface area. So it'll give it more of a bite, and that's what I'll, uh, the holes already line up, so it's perfect, and that's what I'll use to give uh, these brackets their backing. And so that's what we end up with. Pure eyeballing. Pure eyeballing. Of course, the brackets are on the back. Spreading out the stress and uh, giving it more strength. And what's cool about this is this everything I'm making here is I can take this off if I find a better sled or if I destroy this sled somehow, you know. Uh, or if I if I want to upgrade, let's say I find uh, an, uh, a used ice fishing sled that I want to put these brackets on just to go to a bigger one, I can take all this off, you know, with four bolts and boom, I can drill four more holes and put it on a new sled. Couple last steps. I uh, threw on some black paint just because I want to give it more of a finished look. I just don't want it looking like gray conduit, and also to uh, 
you know, protect it further. And I'm also going to dip these ends uh, to quiet them up. I don't want them banging around uh, to the carabiner that attaches to the uh, belt harness. And also to give it, you know, more of a finished look. I like a, a finished look. Just because it's do-it-yourself doesn't mean it's got to look like a piece of hacked up crap. I'm going to dip them in this Plasti Dip. You can pick this up at uh, hardware and auto stores. And that'll just run off and coat that and rubberize the end. We'll do the other side as well. I bought a cheap uh, work belt from Menards, and I, uh, I have a grommet kit. Just put a couple grommets in there, a couple carabiners. And my daughter is going to uh, show you how it works. Okay, a few closing thoughts on this. Uh, having a polk sled in the wintertime allows you to bring stuff that you would never dream of in a summertime uh, backpacking trip. It just allows you to carry stuff that, uh, that would just be too heavy and almost effortlessly. It's a nice piece of gear. Now, of course, doing things yourself will usually save you money, but you get the satisfaction of it. But in this case, you know, if you were to go buy a, uh, a polk sled, of this of this kind just the ex exact dimensions even pretty much the same hookups uh, let's say a Paris expedition sled is about the same size made out of almost the same stuff it would cost you in excess of five hundred dollars polk sleds are a lot of money if you go to buy them it's it's just insane uh, you know you have that satisfaction making something like this yourself I don't know even how much I put into this probably less than 50 bucks but it's pretty cheap to make gives you a lot of advantages uh, when you're pulling gear. That uh, sled's pretty cool.